Okay, I'm going to work uh, backwards from this one. I already did the video, but then it, it uh, didn't save. So who's Dwight D. Eisenhower? In 1961, he gave his presidential address, farewell address, talking about the military-industrial complex. The military-industrial complex is in full swing today. Dwight D. Eisenhower was a general, guys. He was a general. All right, let's see if we can find the short version of the that here. So listen to what he says, and then you tie it in. It's spending the sweat of its laborers. Hold on. In the councils of government, we must guard against the acquisition of unwarranted influence, whether sought or unsought, by the military-industrial complex. So see, he, he said it first, as far as we know, and then Kennedy said it, and then a couple other presidents said it, or, you know, he spoke of it strongly. Now, the, oh, look at military industrial complex to the right, monopoly of the war. So current day we have the, they just passed an $80 billion thing to protect the borders of Ukraine. All right, not the United States borders, but the borders of Ukraine. And in the, in the, in the Congress, they're waving the Ukrainian flag. The Democrats and liberals, and I don't know if, how many Republicans have the flag, but a couple of them had a good vote to go through. So... The military industrial complex gets these people that pay get $179,000 a year right now, and they pay them off. They say, hey, look, you, you, uh, you know, we'll give you the inside trader information on this. And since, you know, you guys passed a law that says basically you can do inside trader, we get people like Nancy Pelosi making this small amount of money, significantly small amount of money. All of a sudden, she has $120 million. How is she able to parlay uh, money that it's 179 now, but it was less than she became it when she first came into office. But she's able to parlay it to 120 million. It's not possible without insider information. And all of them, I think, uh, she has uh, that Cortez is millions of dollars right now, also. It's just came in office, they come in there, and it's just welcome to the bribe city, all right. And now, the military industrial complex is smart. They put uh, bases in all, uh, mostly all the states. And if a senator or congressman get out of hand, they say, you know what? We've been got the Department of Defense. We've been going over it. We don't really think we need their base there. It's kind of redundant. And they're like, hold on, hold on. That's going to cost 40,000 jobs if you do that, et cetera. And they're like, yeah, well, then we need you to vote this $80 billion deal through. You know, if we get $40 billion of it to make, to, to make, to, to uh, give a uh, note, if you will, to Ukraine to then make purchase orders to buy, you know, Grumman and things like that, military products. And then here's a win-win for them because if they don't, if Ukraine, uh, un Russia takes over Ukraine fully, doesn't matter. U.S. citizens will fit the bill to make the, the, ba the balance sheet balanced at the end. And if they do, uh, do declare, you know, a, a truce and Russia keeps part of the land, Ukraine will still have to pay back that money to the United States on long-term payments. And the, the United States citizen will pay back the, the whole lo loan on a short term. So they've got two, two secures of the same loan. They're going to pay get the loan paid back twice. We're, not, we're just going to have to balance the budget, as their word is going to be said. Taxes are going to have to go up. And the note doesn't go down for Ukraine. They still owe the note fully. Now, they're waving their flags in, inside of the Capitol building. Okay, so here are the Democrats. Uh, it says, and well, it might be Republican. Look at the flag they're waving. Look at the flag they're waving there, guys. That's the Ukrainian flag after they've given, uh, what, $60 billion of to the war machines in the states there. I agree with that. Let's listen. Look at all the Ukrainian flag flying. USA so there's their payment, their military industrial complex. There's the payment, there's their loyalty flag right there. Protect the, uh, protect, well, U.S. Capital Code of Conduct. Allowed, allowed, allowed. Terrorism, our father who art in heaven, terrorist. Yeah, agreed, that's what it looks like, right? Ah. Uh. So Eisenhower was the was in 1961. That was his farewell speech. Let's see where he was in 1950. This is World War II. He was supreme commander there. But let's go beyond that. 
night to presidents um, to 1950 before he became president. So, so you, so you could see his experience. He was a presidential terms to 53 to 61. He had some serious time as president, right? Serious time there. So it's not like you can see it's a one-off for one term. There he's doing World War II. You know, he's sitting there. I'll move that out of the way in a second. There we go. Let me do this. And he was also the uh, in charge of, let me get it for you, after, 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 World War, after World War II, before presidency, this part. He was here. On December 19th, 1950, General Dwight Hours up became the NATO's first Supreme Allied Commander, NATO. So he knows what he's talking about when he finally speaks of it after being president for two terms. And then at the end of his term, with a, with his, well, I did research on it, with his brother, he always wanted to say this, and his brother helped him write it. And here we go. So here we go. The next I come to you with a message of leave taking and farewell. This speech did not get very much attention. When a new president is coming to power, as John Kennedy was, the spotlight was not on Dwight Eisenhower. We have been compelled to create a permanent armaments industry of vast proportions. There was a feeling at the time that this... This is the National Archives, so I can play this one-on-one for you guys. ...must have been written by some speechwriter who just sneaked into the speech. In the councils of government, we must guard against the acquisition of unwarranted influence whether sought or unsought, by the military-industrial complex. Three months ago, uh, we got contacted by a family up in Minnesota saying that we have documents from Malcolm Moose. He was responsible in in part for drafting the military-industrial complex speech. These new papers give us written evidence that this was not just some caprice of Eisenhower's or something by some speechwriter. You see the evolution of his speech from from May 1959 to uh, 1961. And he wanted to give this speech for a long time, two years. Our military organization today bears little relation to that known of any of my predecessors in peacetime, or indeed by the fighting men of World War II or Korea. There was one person in Dwight Eisenhower's life whom he really confided almost everything to, and that was his brother Milton. There's one particular document where the speechwriters had already drafted their version of the speech only to to see uh, Milton come along and totally revamp what had already been been written. When Milton Eisenhower was uh, taking notes and writing things on the drafts of these speeches, the speechwriters knew that it wasn't Milton talking, it was Ike. The potential for the disastrous... See, so so because Ike, the president... Is what he was known as, Eisenhower. Ike he used his brother to be like his uh, secretary for him. Rise of misplaced power exists and will persist. He would see magazines with advertisements for some, you know, new warplane or some bomb, and he got so angry he'd take the magazine and throw it into the fireplace of the Oval Office because he felt that defense spending should not be something that would be encouraged by companies who are seeking commercial gain. We must never let the weight. He had five stars on his shoulder. You can back it up, guys. Five stars, high as you can go. Does this combination endanger our liberties or democratic processes? There is an interesting document. It shows that the farewell speech will be made to Congress. But yet, President Eisenhower decided, no, he was going to address the people. Only an alert and knowledgeable citizenry can compel the proper meshing of the huge industrial and military machinery of defense with our peaceful methods and goals, so that security and liberty may prosper together. One test of how well a president speaks is how long the speech lives. Here we are 50 years later, we're still talking about this speech. Now, on Friday noon, I am to become a private citizen. I am proud to do so. I look forward to it. Thank you, and good night. Here's another version of it, guys. A shorter version, I think. So it can pound into your head about... From the President's office in the White House in Washington, D.C., we present an address by the President of the United States, Dwight D. Eisenhower. The President discusses science and national security. 
Sorry, guys, I pressed the, pressed the wrong one. Now, now you'll get the right one. Here it is. In the councils of government, we must guard against the acquisition of unwarranted influence, whether sought or unsought, by the military-industrial complex. Every gun that is made, every warship launched, every rocket fired signifies, in the final sense, a theft from those who hunger and are not fed, those who are cold and are not clothed. This world in arms is not spending money alone. It is spending the sweat of its laborers, the genius of its scientists, the hopes of its children. The cost of one modern heavy bomber is this a modern brick school in more than 30 cities. It is two electric power plants, each serving a town of 60,000 population. It is two fine, fully equipped hospitals. It is some 50 miles of concrete. We pay for a single fighter plane with a half million bushels of wheat. We pay for a single destroyer with new homes that could have housed more than 8,000 people. So that's nothing now, right? Uh, so, guys, the military-industrial complex is what's going on here. We're, we're done. You know, they, they open the door so, because they know the Democrats are an easy sell. Remember, I told you a long time ago, the CIA guy that came out and said, he can buy the United States. And I, at first I thought he was a quackery until he said, no, I simply need to buy uh, just a few members of Congress. And they'll do whatever we say. And there it is. It's, 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 it proves it. You know, the military con con complex doesn't have to buy Joe Citizen's vote, just the Congress people. And they get $60 billion allocated, whatever it may be. They made billions on this, uh, on this uh, Ukraine farce that they put together. Uh, they could have quickly accepted Ukraine into NATO, for example. There's no money in doing that. They did because, they, they, you know, maybe Russia wouldn't attack at that point. It closes it down and maybe it gets us involved too directly. And so, yeah, you know what? Let's don't let them in. Let's pull the U.S. troops out, which they did. And they said, now nah, we're going to make a shitload of money now when Ukraine, when Russia goes in there, because then we're going to, you know, be the antagonist and put all that money in there. We're going to make money that's, that's going to be unforetold. And it still has not come to a tally yet. Now, in the first video I made that it, it, yeah, it, it didn't go through, it deleted somehow, the, um, on, my, on my side, the, um, I talked about the, yeah, train left the station. I missed a track just then. Well, let's see if I can get back on track. That the liberals and the Democrats and a few of the rhinos are not for the United States. That we're going to, once they get an, these illegals voting, which they're going to do, it's over with. Uh, what's that? The Trump is far. The Trump ladies, Ivanka, I think. Oh, not Ivanka. Uh, whatever her name. Erica. Eric. I don't know her name. It's her or DNC, uh, uh, the Republican um, Party there. She said she's going to have a hundred thousand people monitoring. What does it matter? You don't have the power to do anything. So what they monitor? Remember, thirteen states or was a total of fourteen. Texas was the first to say, "Hey, we want to. We would just been disenfranchised." And they were bringing it to the Supreme Court. All these states, United States states, not just a regular person, the states. So I think it's Doss who said, oh, no, they don't have standing. Well, now we're talking about a state, Doss. The states didn't have standing. They feel like they've been disenfranchised by these other states because of their midnight drops, their unfair voting rolls. They're, like I said, midnight drops. They, 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 they came out of nowhere. Well, it, was, it wasn't just Texas. It was, I think, 13 other states, 14 altogether. And the, and the Supreme Court said, oh, we're not going to hear it. Wow, what a slap in the face. Now, let me rant, end it with this. Trump do, is not the, the best presidential choice right now. He's the best presidential choice. But he's not the best because, frankly, he soft his bubble bath, you know. He's not he's not fighting back. He had the power of, of the... Uh, of uh, the Department of Justice, and he let them just do his, do their thing, and they were railroading right over top of him. He could have cleaned house then. He could have fired them, but he was worried, oh, I'll look bad. He's worried about the way he looks. Look, if I'm if it's it's insubordination if you don't follow 
you know, your, your, your leader at the time. It's simple as that. You let them go. You, you ask for the resignation, they resign. That's it. You take away their clearances, and that's it. Now, he didn't do it. He honestly didn't do it. For whatever reason, he just, you know, he, he soft that way. But he's the best choice right now for at least one stopgap closing the borders. Maybe he can do that. Uh, you know, if he gets on it, he can do that. So, and then maybe he can stop the uh, the, the Russian thing and, uh, you know, sign a peace treaty. And, yeah, they lose land. Uh, Ukraine does. But remember, he's also the one that they convinced the CIA told him, don't release the uh, presidential assassination of Kennedy. He was going to release it. And they came and talked to him, and then he said, okay. So apparently he can be talked into by the military-industrial complex, which includes the CIA guys. So, yeah, Trump is the best choice, but he's not for now, but he's not the best choice. All right? You need somebody that's willing to stand up, right? Stand up. Not all this softball shit about, ah, we just handle this, whatever. He needs to have some real people go after people. He needs to... Be part of play dirty with these people. These people play dirty as can be. You can't play fair if somebody's playing dirty. I want to teach you something that I learned in one of my careers that said, uh, why tell the truth when a perfectly good lie will do? And that's the way the Democrats do it. They don't they have to tell the truth. They use a lie, deception to do it. Now, I just saw it today, and I didn't publish it with you guys, but uh, who was it? It was a well-known person that said, um, that the, one of these guys, like the Eisenhower type thing that, oh, it was Nixon. He stated that, uh, and I'll find it for you maybe, but paraphrasing, he stated that, look, he's got a, you know, the, the, the laws to follow, but the press has first amendment. So they got un, unfeathered ability to lie and control people and well, to lie and deceive. And that's the mainstream industrial complex, you know, the mainstream media complex, and that's what we see with, for example, they, they, you know, if you look about it, they, they allow to say things like Trump did this, Trump did that. And then Biden's the greatest person since sliced bread. And he's not mentally ill. He's great. The guy's sharp as a tack. And he's got, you know, 90 more years left in him. You see, and, and so Nixon was right about that, about, wow, when he called it about the, the media is going to be your worst enemy, this mainstream media is. And now we have, um, uh, and, and for you Aussies out there, the your police department saying, don't trust the mainstream media. We will tell you what to say. Trust us. We will tell you the truth. That's the police saying that. We're doing a publication. You guys can go Google that shit. I'm not going to drive you crazy with the post here. Well, maybe I will. Okay, here we go, guys. Minute 24. Let's see. I will do the short version. Maybe this will be the short version. Let's see. Yesterday, one day ago. Okay, yeah, that's about right. We have extra officers deployed. We've deployed extra officers since Monday night, particularly in southwest Sydney, but across Sydney to patrol places of worship and other important installations. The community should have no current concerns for their safety. I also want to stress that there is misinformation being communicated across social media and people should not share any of that information. The source of information should be from police and law enforcement authorities and if people have concerns, they should check our websites, our socials and any other direct news from law enforcement about current information. If we have current credible information about any risk or threat to the community, we will let them know. We will share that with the community. So please be assured that police will be the source of truth and not social media and misinformation. <laughs> yes, guys, that's where it is. Police will be the source of truth and not social media. Or Mr. So they're now shutting down. You know the way this gets legs, guys. Other police departments, the same thing. It'll all get legs. It's not a joke. This is the way it goes. You know, it's not a pun on life. There's no apology coming forward about this. This is they will tell the truth if you want your truth. Here we go. Will be the source of truth and not police will be assured that police will be the source of truth and not social media. Let me stop there. So you just heard that. 
So you, you, it's not that you can't write this stuff. It's just hard to believe. You know, it's like we're living in an upside down world. And yes, I called the illegal thing. I started talking about that way back when Trump was in office. It's not sustainable. And now Biden said that he was, wants them in here and it, it's going to happen. That way it'll only be one party. And the military industrial complex has, that home, has a home run in that case. Um, and as you heard Eisenhower state, the money they spend is just a crazy amount. And now this is what Putin said the other day, and I'll try to wrap it up with this one. He said, look, we only spend about 3% of our gross national product on the military. The United States, that was, that was Russia, the United States spends more than all the countries combined on their military or industrial complex. You know, around the world, bases and all that. More than all the other countries combined. As simple as that, guys. Think about it. Who else has all these bases around the world? So it shows you, yeah. More than, every, than all of them combined, it, what Russia said, what Putin said. And so Putin made it clear. He said, look, they come into Ukraine and they want to fight on Ukraine territory. He doesn't have the power. He only got 3%. He's not going to try to fight them that capacity. He says, yes, well, the, you know, this will leave open that we'll use our nuclear power. To, uh, if you're going to be fighting on Ukraine territory, he never talked about shooting outside of there. So if, uh, you know, the British want to come there and fight or the French want to come fight on the side of Ukraine, inside Ukraine, he's not going to fuck around. You get going to the F-A-F-O, fuck around and find out. He's going to use the, the nukes on there and that's that. It's already a graveyard, I mean, level there. So you just put the troops there and he can just, you know, radiate it. And where's he going to go? What are you going to do about it? What are you going to do? Because he's got enough nukes to keep, you know, we can end the world with this bullshit that they're doing. They're not going to nuke Russia. They can nuke military troops inside, you know, the fighting ground, the military field, if you will. But you don't, if they cross the line, any country cross the line to nuke Russia, Russia, you think they're just not going to cross. They're going to say, oh, that, that one's on us. You got that one. That's that's a freebie. No. So he's made it clear that he's got his warning. They got, They have their warning that he said that, Look, you you do that. I can't. I can't be fucking around trying to fight all of you one by one as you stack up inside uh, um, Ukraine. Stack up, guys. That means like behind each other. You know, next, next French, then the British, then the Australians, and then the well, the French don't really fight, do they? They they surrender. I speak a little bit of French, guys. It's uh, we surrender, we surrender, we surrender. Anyway, so um, there's the truth teller right there. She just said it. And I should mention the other one. Maybe you can find that one yourself. But we're, we're screwed. Okay, I'm going to end it with this one. Did you see the guy that Bert set himself on fire? He's talking about the... Uh, that's his, He apologizes in his, in his thing to, every, to first responders and all for what he's doing. And he said he's doing it because of, uh, you know, the, the all his little research shows that we're, we're fucked. Well, it doesn't take much research to show that we're fucked. Around the world that we're fucked. So, ah, here we go, guys. What a what a time period we're living in that uh, we're seeing the end of something. It's not the beginning. We're seeing the end of something, and I don't know what revo- re, you know what comes after this. What what resolves this? But this is the end of uh, of the United States as far as being a free, being the country we knew as far as border borders. And things like that. Hell, you can't get into other countries that I've been looking into them. You can't even get in there without some of them, a couple million dollars you got to buy real estate for. Some of them you can buy 200 grand, you can buy a passport, plus you got to do this or that. Another one, you, you know, it's, uh, you know, all, all this, a lot of, lot of hoops you have to go through, including learning the language. One, like Austra- uh, Switzerland, you got to learn one of the three languages, German, um, Romanian, or, and or French. And if you learn those, you can get your citizenship. So it's it's crazy the uh, the requirements to become a citizen around every single country in the world, uh, except for the United States. It's just come on in, do what you want to do, and fuck it. We just want your vote. We just want you as voters. I guess they'll close the border once they got it locked down with all the Democrats enough. They'll say, oh, enough, we got enough now, we're good. And I bet you, they'll, well, that's fucked up, isn't it? And they'll close the borders then. As soon as they get enough, this next election, for example, these people are going to vote. They're going to give them the right to get driver's license. And if you guys know, that's where they change it now, where they put you down as a voter, whether you like it or not. And then you got to decline it. No, no, don't put me down. So they're going to give them the right to get driver's licenses. They've already given them rights to have guns. Shit you not. You guys can look that up. 
and the illegals can buy guns. I don't know how they do that without a driver's license, but they have given them a right to get a driver's license. With that, they get the right to vote. They can bounce that license off around to many different states also. Hanging up on you guys. Take care and, you know, just remember how to start it off with the flag, with the Ukraine, or even the re Ukraine flag inside the Capitol building. Oh, a version of the Ukraine flag inside the Capitol building. And that we're out billions of dollars now. And what do you guys say?